friends, welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Caitlin and I like to film eyeshadow palette ranking and review videos, as well as the occasional other beauty content sprinkled in. So if you like indie makeup, if you like eyeshadow palettes, if you like beauty content in general, I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button because I post two videos every single week. And for those of you that are not new here, my face is happy that you are seeing it again. And I feel like I haven't filmed a monthly ranking video in forever because I think I did my March one at the beginning of April, but I'm filming the April one like mid-May, so it feels like it's been a really long time. So I am sorry for the delay. I had some new stuff coming into me. I was just in a funk with filming and coming back from vacation and it was just a whole thing. But anyways, let's go ahead and rank every eyeshadow palette that I used both new and old in the month of April. Okay, so going to give a very quick rundown just in case any of you are new here and have no idea how I do my ranking. So I rank every eyeshadow palette that I reached for in the prior month. So like I just said, new or old palettes, doesn't matter, I'm ranking all of them. I do point out which palettes are new to me or were gifted to me in PR just for the sake of one, transparency, and two, to just show you guys that there is sometimes like, just because a new palette is everybody's favorite new palette for the month doesn't mean we necessarily need it because is it my favorite new palette compared to palettes I already had in my collection? You know what I'm saying? So that's why I like to do that. I do my rankings um, because I cannot keep count. I do them in four categories. So within each category, you could probably shift the palettes around on any given day. But I do think the categories are helpful to give you an idea of like, Every palette in this category, whether it's the bottom or the top of the category, kind of has the similar vibe to me, if that makes sense. So it's almost like a tiered ranking. But anyways, let's go ahead and get on into it. Okay, so the first category is our bottom category, and it's the category that I describe as palettes I feel meh about. Like palettes that if I broke them or lost them, I'd be okay. <laughs> I really wouldn't be that upset about it. So let's start with the first palette in this section um and i'm kind of torn which one i want to start with there's two i'll start with this one this is the huda beauty empowered palette now the quality of this palette is actually really nice i think you can get really really pretty looks with this my issue is all of the looks tend to be very like orangey and then you have these like really intense yellow golds taking up space so they're just not looks that like I really like um, on myself personally. I could absolutely see myself using this palette to do like other people's makeup in my life that I, I think these tones might just work better for them. So I think it serves a purpose in my collection, but it's just not my favorite. I And I really think these yellow golds are what do it for me. Um, the neutral looks that you get are nice, but I have those exact shades in all of my Vizzy Art palettes. So it's just like something that I don't feel like adds a whole lot. And it's not my favorite of the Huda Beauty palette. So that's why that's there. The reason I was torn between that one and then the next one is solely because of packaging. So the next one is the Glam Light Chucky Crazy in Love palette. And I really like the packaging of this. I also like the theming. So that's why I put this one one spot higher, but really they I feel the same about both of them. This palette is so dark. It is so, so dark. And while I appreciate a smoky eye, I do. I love a good smoky eye. I don't want to only be able to do a smoky eye with a palette. And it feels very limiting, even though I can do a purple toned smoky eye, a gray toned smoky eye, a red toned smoky eye. They're all smoky eyes and they don't look that different. Now, do I understand why it's a smoky, dark toned palette given the theme? Absolutely. I think the color story makes sense for this theme 100%. I think they did a great job on the packaging, on the whole collection, how they themed it, how they did all of that. I do think Glam Light did really well in that sense. It's just the color story doesn't, as far as the standalone palette goes, it's just like not quite it for me. Um, so yeah, those are my feelings on it. But I do think the mattes and this one and the shimmers perform much better than I felt like I had in the first round of Scooby-Doo palettes from them. Next set of palettes are going to be palettes that I like. Okay, <laughs> like I like them, they're all right. I don't have any major complaints about them. 
they're just not like they just don't have that like wow factor for me I guess so first one up in this category is going to be the Viseart Petite Shimmers Koi Palette now I do think the packaging is adorable I always love Viseart's packaging don't know why I was holding that upside down anyways it's an all shimmer palette so I think as far as my Viseart collection goes it will add something to that because I have quite a few of the all matte palettes from Viseart so I think this is really nice I think this is great for traveling I love the fact that I can mix and move around my Viseart pans if I want to um so that's why I went for this I will say part of the reason I think this is so low for me normally I really love Viseart's palettes the part of the reason I think this one is so low is the first look I did I really didn't like how it turned out and I don't know if that's the palette's fault or a me fault so I'll have to continue to play with this to see if my thoughts change. I've only used it the one time so far, so I'll have to continue to play with it to see if my thoughts change over time. Um, this palette is not new, but it was new to me, and it's sort of new in the sense that they re-released it. It was in the bigger pans and in the bigger palette size. Viseart just re-released it in the petite um, version, so it was new to me, but I did purchase that myself. Anyways, Next up, we have the Odin's Eye and Makeup Just for Fun Flora Story palette. I feel really bad about this because it's like a creator collab and I always feel I feel bad like not like singing the praises of them because I know people worked really hard on this it's just not I don't know I think this one might just be too subtle for me if you're somebody who gears more towards neutral or more muted looks I'm obviously not that person but anyways if you're that kind of makeup lover I think you would really like this palette I don't know if it's still available it has beautiful shades in it like the best bud shade and misty these two green shimmers down here absolutely gorgeous some of my favorite green shimmers in my collection but when I do a look with this palette at the end of it I'm just like okay sure like it's fine um but it's not like anything like extraordinary and I've used every shade in this palette and I've done a few looks with it and it's just every time I'm just sort of like all right it's pretty you know like I I just need that extra that extra oomph um so moving it along next up I feel bad about this one because this was gifted to me in PR. There was no obligation to post, no obligation to post only positive reviews. Um, but when somebody gives you something for free, you really want to like it. And you really want to, it's like as if somebody gives you a birthday present, you want to like what they give you. Um, so I always just feel really bad about it. But anyways, it's the Indie Beat Cosmetics Platinum Hits 3 palette. Now, I will say, I do have the shimmers from this, or some of the shimmers from this palette on my lid right now. So you can see how gorgeous and pretty they are. Um... This is what the inside of the palette looks like. Some of the shimmers, I haven't used every single one yet. So this review of this palette is still evolving. Some of the shimmers are not my favorite. Um, specifically Despacito, Despacito um, didn't look, it just didn't do what I wanted it to do. Um, so some of them feel not quite as like special as others um some of them are super special so the ones i have on my lid today are rockstar shape of you sunflower and then i have we are young in the inner corner so i did really like how today's look came out but i'm just sort of like one it's a lot of shimmer shades like it's a very what is that one two three it's 18 shimmer shades and that's a lot of shimmers um it just feels like kind of overwhelming and so some of them are kind of similar i thought i'd like this color story more but I don't find myself reaching for it that often. So anyways, that's why I had to put this one here. Um, I do think the shimmer shades are really pretty. I just don't, I feel like it's a lot of them and I don't reach for them that often. And then some of them haven't quite worked for me. But like I said, review on that one's still evolving. I will keep you guys posted. <laughs> Next up is the, and I don't think we've talked about, other than the Koi palette, oh, this was, uh, the Platinum Hits 3 was new to me for the month of April. Um, the Indie Beat Cosmetics gifted it to me and I got it literally like right before I went on my trip in April. So I used it once <laughs> before my trip and then I used it again today. So I've only played with it twice, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, moving along, we have the Celestial Garden palette. This is a collab between Bella Beauté Bar and M. Jones. This is the inside of the palette. Um, I struggle with this color story a little bit like on how to do a lot of different looks with it like I've done a couple like I did like a sunsetty eye and then I did like a green eye and then I'm like cool <laughs> I don't I don't know where to go from here so I think that it's just me in this like color story I'm not quite getting I do like that the uh water activated liners are included and I think I've used a couple of the water activated liners and they've worked pretty good so far so 
it's not really a quality thing so much as I'm like trying to figure out like I don't know what to do with it by itself. Um, anyways, next up we have the Melt Cosmetics Radioactive Palette. I really went into the archives for the month of April. Some of these are really old. Um, this palette is gorgeous. I really like this color story. It's super bright. You have like some shades that are almost satiny that I think blend out really pretty. I like this palette a lot. I'm kind of thinking I maybe put it in the wrong category now that I'm looking at it here. It is like a neon rainbow. So I feel like maybe I put it here because there's really only so much you can do with it. But I do really like it. Okay, question mark on that one. That might have needed to have gone up another category. <laughs> now that I'm sitting here, I'm going, mm, I might like that more than this category. Anyways, uh, next up we have the Bella Beauté Bar and Lexi La La Makeup Collab. This is the CEO of the Rainbow Palette. I think the last time I ranked this palette, I said that it kind of, uh, like wasn't my favorite. I said that I struggled with some of the mattes. I didn't really know what to do with this palette, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't into it that much. I've since used this palette a couple of times and man, the two looks that I did with it, I absolutely adored and I felt like the mattes worked amazing. I think the first time I ranked it, I had mainly used these like more neon-y shades and I did struggle with those. Um, but I've since used the other shades quite a bit more and if you're not reaching for the neons, the mattes work really well. The neons require some finessing. You're able to get them to work, but they require some finessing. So I'll be honest about that. So that's why I have this palette here. This palette also feels like one that I probably could have bumped up another spot, but I think it was mainly the lack of like shimmer options. I wish I had more shimmer options in here or different color shimmers. I don't know. It's not, the shimmers don't quite make sense for me, but if I just take the mattes in this palette and combine it with like special shimmers, toppery shades that I have, it's a real banger. So I like that one a lot actually. So I like all of these okay, except for the one that starts at the top. I like them quite a bit. Uh, same with this one. I don't know. Maybe I should have cut this off at the Celestial Garden. Whatever. We're here, okay? Next up, we have the Too Faced Italian Spritz Palette. I like this palette a lot, too. Um, it's just Too Faced. Oh, God, it smells so good. <sighs> it smells like grapefruit. Anyways, um, Too Faced is a brand that is marketed towards the masses. It is marketed towards people who, you know, don't necessarily do this kind of makeup look. Um, you know, it's marketed towards people who I think like makeup, but it's also marketed towards people who like want something easy to use that's cute to look at, you know, like not, doesn't have to be crazy. I do think this is like a little bit adventurous for Too Faced. You do have some of the blues and things like that, but it's still mostly neutral or like like these corallies, these pinks, like it's safer shades. But like I said, they market towards the the big population, the market beauty market at large, which is not most of us on uh, beauty YouTube. I know we like to think that we make up the majority of the makeup community, but I, there's a lot of people out there that I don't think consume any makeup content that are out there buying makeup. So anyways, uh, this palette, I do like it. The shimmers are a, a little bit lackluster, um, which is why I have it here. I feel like there are better shimmers in my collection, but it's honestly, it's really not a bad palette. It's, um, it smells amazing. So like, if you just want it to smell it, oh my God, that smells so good. Um, <laughs> and I really like the theming of it. I did do a dedicated video, um, with this palette where I kind of talked about why this palette has like a special place in my heart a little bit. Um, that will be linked in the description box down below. Any of these palettes where I've done a dedicated video or short, I will link the video or the short in the description box down below. Any of these palettes that I have affiliated links to, I will link those down below as well. And I will note if it is an affiliated link. So if you don't want to use it, that's fine. Um, but yeah, also, uh, it, I don't know if it's too late to explain this because you've probably already seen codes pop up on the bottom of the screen, but I'm putting up codes <laughs> if I have any affiliated codes. Um, I don't have any non-affiliated codes. The only codes I have are affiliated codes, but Anyways, if you want to use a code, save some money and, um, you know, support me and my channel, I would really, really appreciate it. So let's move on to the next category. Okay, next category are palettes that I really, really like. So basically the last three palettes in that last category, they probably should have gone into this category, but we are here. It is okay. Um, we will all live. So first one up, I have the Nomad Cosmetics Royal Europe palette, and I'm so annoyed I ripped this box. So I was trying to keep it in the box because if you're not familiar, this palette is like laser cut 
and I just feel like it's really going to easily get damaged and I don't I don't want it to get damaged. Um, this palette's not new to me for this month, but I was gifted this palette when it first launched. What was that, March? Anyways, um, this is what the inside looks like. Now, I like this palette. I like it a lot. I think the multi-chromes here at the bottom, you have five multi-chromes. I think they're beautiful. I also think the cost of this palette, given that you have five multi-chromes and 10 really solid mattes, like it's priced very well. Now, my quandary, my issue with this palette, I am very fair skinned, very pale, very light. The lighter sh mattes in this palette, like just don't, they're just not quite light enough for me. Um, they look a little bit too dark for me. So I have to pull in something else to blend it out, but that is okay. So I still really like this palette, but I couldn't put it in like my perfect Holy Grail category because it's not quite a standalone palette for me personally, but I do think it's really nice. Next up, we're going to do the uh, Bella Beauté Bar Poison Garden 2 palette. Now this is a new to me palette. Um, this palette, I think Bella Beauté Bar launched a while back, but they re-released it. And I can't remember if they reformulated the mattes or if it's just a re-promote in general. I really don't know. But I really like the look that I did with this palette. I had a great time playing with it. Um, some of the shimmers are kind of their standard sparkly shimmers. Some of them feel like a little bit different than their normal shimmers. Uh, I will have to play around with it more to see. I don't think I used anything but what felt like their normal, really special shimmers that they normally do. I think that's what I used so far. But I will play with the other shades, obviously continue to share my looks as our continue to, sh I will continue to share the looks, but I'll also continue to share my thoughts as I formulate them. But yeah, I really like this palette. I really like this color story. Um, I love the packaging. I know some people, I just hit myself in the face. I know some people don't like like skulls and stuff like that, but like I'm kind of into the darker stuff like that. So I'm okay with it. Next up is the Lunar Beauty uh, 12 Days of Lunar, like the advent calendar palette that they did. This is what the inside of the palette looks like. Okay. I have a really important way to describe my feelings on this palette. I love this palette. I brought this on vacation with me. So I brought this palette, the Odin's Eye palettes, and I want to say the Witchcraft palette, which I just realized I didn't pull into this ranking. Okay, hold on. Pause. Just pause. I forgot to talk about this. This is the Spellbound Beauty Witchcraft palette. Um, I did use this in the month of April. This is what the palette looks like. I would put this probably in a similar spot to the Indie Beat Cosmetics. So that was the last category, but it's like right around there. Cause similar to the Indie Beat Cosmetics palette, it's like, I just don't reach for this quite that often. I don't like the mattes in here. Um, the shimmers are beautiful. Same with the Indie Beat Cosmetics ones, but I just don't reach for them all that time, all that often. Cause it's just, I tend to reach for like, I don't know. I tend to reach for other palettes. So anyways, that's where that palette would be. Sorry for the confusion. So resuming, coming back, we're in the palette category of palettes that I really like and they are um we are on the Lunar Beauty one so anyways brought all those I, back to what I was saying I brought the Odin's Eye palette the Witchcraft palette and this palette on um vacation with me because I felt like the I hadn't used this palette that much I know it came out last holiday season but I was like I just really wanted to play with it more. This palette is so good. Like every look I did with it, I was like, oh my gosh, I ended up using this palette, I think the most on my trip. I don't know that I kept track of which palettes I used on my trip. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but I think I used this palette the most on my trip. I just kept reaching for it. The green, I did like an all green look, gorgeous. I did a neutral look, stunning. I just loved using this palette. The mattes worked really well. The shimmers are great. Now you're like, wow, you really love this palette, but it's not in the top category. And it just really, I think bugs me that the packaging and the color story doesn't match. And I really didn't think that that would be that much of an issue for me, but it kind of is. It like mentally, there's something about that, that it's like just messes me up. If this had like a fall, like more autumn toned, like packaging that matched the inner part, I think I'd reach for this more. I don't know. Um, I also just wonder if, cause I have, I mean, I have like Death and Candy custom creations. I have some of her like empty palettes. Like maybe if I just move those shades into one of those, I'd use it more. I don't know, but I really, the quality of those shades is really, really good. That's what I'm trying to hammer home here. Okay, next up we have the Odin's Eye and Lauren Sea Talk palette. This palette's really pretty. I actually really like this yellow sh satin shade. I discovered that a, a satin in the inner corner 
there's something about it because a matte inner corner I really like a satin just gives you that extra little hint of sparkle I we're all sleeping on satins in the inner corner let me just say that um I think this palette is really fun I like that you can do neutrals I like that you can pull in the pops of color I think it's a really cute and really pretty palette so I like to playing with it a lot and I like that the uh inside matches the outside Next up is the Melt Cosmetics Electrip palette. This palette was new for the month of April. Um, I did purchase this one myself. This is what the inside of the palette looks like. The reason that I have this palette here and not in like my top top is just because I don't know that this is a color store I'm necessarily going to reach for a lot. I did use this matte blue today um, for this look, but I, yeah, I don't know. I'm just kind of like, iffy on it but I do really like this palette I think it's a fun color story I like the theming of it I know a lot of people talked a lot of crap about how it's like electric and it's not neon but I feel like this is about as colorful and trippy as like melt is gonna get they don't go neon well I don't know actually I just showed you the radioactive but they haven't gone neon in a very long time so I don't know I like it I feel like it's like a 70s acid trip like it's like got an antique email to it anyways um all right last palette in this category is going to be the micah beauty shop and marta's makeup palette this is the serpent palette and this is another new palette for the month of april um i really like this palette the shimmer shades in this palette are gorgeous the mattes are okay they're not quite my favorite but they're not the worst mattes I've ever used either. Um, but I like, so, so far I like it. I really, really like the shimmer shades. I think they might, I might like them enough to like overcome how I feel about the mattes, but overall I think this is a really fun and unique color story and the packaging is absolutely stunning. So I really enjoy this palette quite a bit. So now we are going to move on to the last category, which is like my favorites, holy grail palettes. Like these are the top of the top of the top if I lost or something happened to any of these palettes I would try my hardest to replace them which is crazy because I have like 150 palettes I shouldn't really need to replace any single eyeshadow palette because I have so many but these ones I would go out of my way to replace so anyways I just want you to know how much I love all of the ones we're about to talk about First up in this, like, I absolutely adore every single one of these palettes category is the Odin's Eye and Bella, Bella, oh my gosh, the Odin's Eye and Betty Jean or um, Batty Bean, the Planet Spirit palette. This is what the inside of the palette looks like. I love this palette. I know a lot of people, I think, were, like, really hyped on the Sea Talk palette and the Flora Story palette, and this one was, like, too bright for people or they were just like nah not for me this is like don't sleep on this this is gorgeous this these neon mattes are neon like they are pigmented so beautiful I love this I think this is so great I will say there's like a little part of me that sort of struggles with this color story but then I go on Instagram and I just search the little planet spirit hashtag and there are so many people that have done beautiful looks with this palette so I think it is really pretty you could just pair it with the individual matte to shimmer like the the green shimmer with the green matte if you're really not sure what to do but I really really like that palette a lot Next up is the Nude Prism palette from Lunar Beauty. I slept on this palette for so long. When this palette launched, I was like, I don't wear neutral eyeshadows. I don't need it. I'm gonna skip it. And then I was watching person after person sing the praises of this palette. And I was like, nah, I still don't need it. Still don't need it. Still don't need it. And then finally I wanted it and it was sold out. And so I'd keep checking, waiting for it to come in stock. And then as soon as it came into stock, I bought this bad boy. I was so excited, I accidentally bought two. <laughs> So uh, I meant to give the second one to somebody for their birthday, but then I totally forgot that I had it. So I got them something else. Anyways, I now have this extra one that I have not opened, haven't touched, haven't looked at that I'm probably going to put in a giveaway and then I'm slowly going to build up this giveaway box. But anyways, um, this palette, the nude person palette, let's look at the inside. This is perfection. This is the perfect neutral palette. I this is my Holy Grail neutral palette. This one, like between this one and then the Kathleen Lights disc uh, and Il Maquillage, the Disco Fox palette, I, those are the two neutral palettes that like I would, I would die for those neutral palettes. I really, really like them. I, and there's something, maybe because I'm getting older and more mature, but there's something to be said about just like a really well executed neutral look. You know what I mean? Like you just flawlessly glammed yourself and oh gosh, 
there's just something about it and then you can wear I also really love wearing like bright pops of color on my lips in the summer so I think I also that's why I enjoy the neutral look is because I want to wear like a red lip a hot pink lip like and I just think that's fun in the summer I don't know why I don't like doing it the rest of the year I'm not saying you can't do it the rest of the year but I just that's my personal <laughs> taste um last new palette and this palette was gifted to me um but this is the pastel garden palette from Bella Beauté Bar listen I can get rid of every other pastel eyeshadow palette that I have. I'm have to make sure I'm checking my mirror that I can so I can see where I'm at um, because this palette's so big. I gotta make sure it's in frame. But anyways, I can get rid of every pastel eyeshadow palette I have. This is the only one I need. It has every single shade I need in it. The pastel mattes work so nicely. These shimmers are beautiful. Um, I know my friend Annette uh, from Annette's Makeup Corner mentioned that she had some issues with creasing with the shimmers. I had issues with creasing on this shade Pansy, but I haven't had that with any of the other shades. So I don't know. And then with Pansy, I can't remember if I used a glitter primer. I haven't used a glitter primer with the other shades, so maybe that helped. I don't, I really don't know, but I really haven't had a ton of issues um, with creasing. Like I said, it was just that one shade that I noticed it, but the rest of them I've worn all day with like minimal to no creasing. So I adore this palette. I love the faux leather packaging and I feel like it sounds like I'm talking a big, big game, but let me tell you, I decluttered my Natasha Denona pastel palette after I've like used this one several times to go this is perfect for me I decluttered that Natasha Denona one because I was like I don't need it I really don't if I want pastels I'm gonna reach for this palette now I will say a lot of the times that I reach for this palette I've combined it with other palettes because an all pastel look isn't my favorite but I've also done quite a few all pastel looks with this palette that I've really liked so I think this is a great standalone palette if you like an all pastel look it's not quite a standalone palette for me a lot of the time because I am going to pull in stuff but it's like the only pastel eyeshadow palette I need which is why I felt like it needed to be in this holy grail spot so anyways like I said that was the last new palette that I got for the month of April um gotten tried I should say in the month of April so there are two more palettes left so that just means that like the new palette didn't didn't win the whole month, but mainly because I really love these next two eyeshadow palettes. So next up is the Warms My Blood palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. I mentioned this on a TikTok recently, and then somebody told me that the like new version of it with like the different packaging is still available on Unearthly site. I don't know if that's still the case or not. Um, if it's available though, I'll link it down below. But if it's not, I'm really sorry. It was limited edition. Anyways, here's what the palette looks like. It is gorgeous. The shimmers in this palette are just like, so, they're so good. And these mattes blended out really nicely. I don't know how to explain it, but these, uh, these shimmers are just gorgeous. I really think Unearthly has a really solid shimmer formula and it always makes me want to buy more of their palettes because I'm always happy with how my palettes are once I try them but I just don't pick up a lot of their palettes and I don't know why. Um, anyways. Last palette, number one palette is going, so, okay, funny thing here, we almost bulk-ended this, I guess I moved the other Glam Light palette, I moved to not quite the bottom spot, but had it been in the bottom spot, we would have been bookending this whole ranking with Glam Light, but anyways, our number one palette is the Glam Light and Barbie palette, this is the, what, Dream Summer palette, I love this palette, I really, really do, I think this palette is gorgeous, um, perfect color story, adore it, it's beautiful, Everything about this palette I like. I love playing with it. Um, I think this palette will pair so nicely with that new Scooby-Doo palette, which you bet your bottom dollar I picked up because um, I it looks like I'm just going to like it as much as I like this one. And I really, really like this palette. So anyways, okay, jump cutting this clip in here because I forgot to mention it and it's something that I just started keeping track of. But I like to keep track of which palette I reach for the most because while my palette ranking kind of gives you an idea of like which palette inspires me the most. I do think it's helpful to know which palette I actually use the most in the prior month. So the palette that I reached for the most was the Bella Beauté Bar Pastel Garden Palette. I used that palette four times in the month of April and then the other palettes I all reached for either one to two times each. Although I didn't keep track of which palettes I was using on my vacation and I feel like I might have used the Lunar Beauty one like three times while I was on vacation. So if that's the case, that would be the second most and then the rest were one to two times. But anyways, just wanted to throw that in here because I felt like that was an important thing to know.
Those are all of my palettes that I used in the month of April. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know which palettes you reached for last month or just even lately. What eyeshadow palettes are you reaching for? What are you having a lot of fun playing with? Um, let me know if there's any palettes that we have different opinions on. If there's palettes I didn't like that you really like. If there's palettes I like that you don't like. I don't mind arguing about makeup in the comments or debating makeup in the comments, I should say. Arguing's a bit of a harsh word. I don't want to argue with people, but I don't mind debating or just like hearing other opposing opinions and thoughts. Um, but anyways, that is it for me. Like I said, let me know anything you want to know. Let me know in the comments down below. And I actually, let me backtrack. Don't let me know anything you want me to know. Let I, I retract that statement. I don't want to hear. Let me know anything makeup related in the comments down below and I will see you next time. Bye.